you have presented a case for why string theory is not even wrong or it's just wrong now. Unfortunately, I have no string theories here today to defend the case. So <laughs> I'm going to take up that responsibility. Go for it. I'm going to play devil's advocate. I'm going to stand up for string theory in their absence. I'm going to list down some popular defenses of string theory against criticisms like yours. I would love to hear your thoughts on them. So let's start. Jim Gates, theoretical physicist at Brown University, he once said that string theory is broken out into the consciousness of the general public before we are finished. Many benefits of exploring string theory are not spoken about. It has allowed us to think deeply about subsequent ideas like calculating the force between electrons, holography, weak strong duality. All of these are spawned from string theory. I'm going to add to that something Matthew Kleban said, professor of physics at New York University, who was on this show last month. He said that along the way of studying string theory, you learn about condensed matter systems, classical theories of gravity, superconductivity. I'll also add to that what Brian Greene said, your colleague at Columbia University, who said that string theory is a rich source of material that has kept people deeply engaged in moving the frontier forward. Do you think there's value in this argument that even if the primary thread of string theory, pun not intended, even if the primary thread of string theory is facing this dead end or it's not falsifiable, it's not productive, just continue to work with this framework is creating so many positive externalities and these powerful ideas like the ones they've listed. Well, yeah, I think the funny thing is all of those statements are actually perfectly consistent with my claim that it, that you know, as, as a theory of everything, it is just wrong. And I mean, none of they're, they're not saying it isn't. And, and actually Gates, I think is, is an interesting thing because I've talked to him a bit and I know his work and, and, and he actually is somebody also who very early on was interested in string theory, but who I think also very early on understood exactly this problem that if you try to do, to do string theory in 10 dimensions, the problem of, of the other six dimensions is, is just going to make, make it impossible because you'll be able to get either, either you won't be able to find any way thing to do consistent with the six dimensions or you'll be able to get anything. So he, he was always and always in his career has been very interested in string theory, but in, in trying to resolve these technical problems of what, how do you get strings to actually work in four dimensions? So he, you know, he, he's gone in his, his, his own route and been interested in things, but, um, but, but I think he, he early on, I think would, would actually agree with me that what the, the theory of everything that Witten was trying to sell everybody, it was not going to work. It was just wrong. So that's an example, but, but all, all of them, I mean, they're all saying, well, okay, you know, this didn't work out as it was supposed to, but, you know, because of it, we've done all these different things and there's a very, very long list. Gates has his list. Brian has his list. Matthew Clevin has his list of, of all these things. And they're all, you know, I, 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 I mean, you know, it's, it's not that none of these things have any value, but, but, but to, to be honest, but, you know, and they're the people who work on them are very, often very enthusiastic about them, about, oh, th this is a, a great idea, and, and it kind of evolved. So what's going on a lot is, is you see people now saying, well, string theory is great, and string theory is wonderful because, you know, of such and such a subject, which actually isn't string theory, doesn't have anything to do with string theory, but we started, we ended up working on it because of yeah. trying to solve problems in string theory. And, uh, you know, okay, but the, the problem with, with all, all of these things is that, you know, maybe not to name any names, but but one of the big problems with string theory was just the huge amount of hype that that you know the claims were made for it publicly, which really just were were not true, which were unsustainable, which which really were were way excessive. And you know, a lot of it is it was just due to, due to the enthusiasm of the people involved. I mean, what the story I told you about Witten, I think, is a good example. I mean, you know. He's a genius. He's brilliant. He was very enthusiastic about these ideas. So, you know, people would come to them and he would tell them, Rob, what you're doing and work on string theory. It's the greatest thing in the world. And, but, you know, <laughs> you know, he, he, he was wrong. People are very enthusiastic about the things they work on. You have to be enthusiastic about the things you work on to, to, um, to keep doing it. But, you know, a, a lot of, anyway, if you look into, in, into what the actual details of, of, of what, what these different people are, are, are telling you about. They're, um, they're a combination of things which don't have all that much connection to string theory and also ide ideas which, a lot of, a lot of ideas which ha have been overhyped in some of the same ways and by some of the same people as, as string theory was. 
if I was a string series here today, wouldn't I challenge you with the same question that the work that you're doing with Twisters is similarly, like you said, not even wrong. It's not falsifiable at this stage. So why would I not extend the same argument and say there's no point in pursuing this even further, even if you might discover something else along the way? Well, it's, um, yeah, I, I think the, 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 what I'm doing is, is different j- just in the sense that it, it's very, you know, as I said, unfortunately, I haven't really gotten anybody else very interested in it. So, <laughs> and, and, and I'm not, I'm not the most, I'm not the most brilliant person around. I'm not the most energetic person around. So I'm kind of, I've been thinking about this and the more I see about it, I'm, I'm very enthusiastic and, and, and I th- feel like I'm making a slow progress, but, but this is just me, you know, working, <laughs> doing a lot of other things in life, working part-time on this and not the smartest guy around. And it's, um, you know, and I, I you know, anyway, I think I'm getting somewhere and, 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 and getting, but, but this is not a, this is very different than kind of 40 years of the smartest people in the world and by the thousands working on something and, and it not working. It's the, it, 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 it it's, it's a different situation. Let's do another defense of string theory. In an article titled On the Essence of Discovery, Matthew Kleban, once again, he said that what precisely is the definition of theories of physics and why must all of them live or die by experiment? Since long before the 17th century and even more so today, mathematicians have unabashedly pursued abstract ideas with no connection to experiment whatsoever. Cosmology was almost entirely unmoved from experiment until the 20th century when advances in telescope technology made the relevant observations possible. He also cites the study of percolation that found real world applications much later. And he ends with the essence of discoveries that you do not know what you will find until you look. Brian Greene also said something similar in an interview. He said, maybe we don't have the technology to work with the energy levels that string theory predicts at the moment. That doesn't mean that we shouldn't work at the moment. Because at some point, technology will catch up like telescopes caught up with cosmology. And at that point, it will all make sense. What is your take on these? Well, I, th- I think... Yeah, so the, I mean, one of the main misunderstandings of the argument I was making in my book and I made is that I'm not, you know, I mean, th- there is a strong argument against string theory that, you know, it, that, look, you know, nobody's tested it. You haven't been able to predict anything that, that you could go out and measure and nobody's actually done any measurement that agrees with it. So this is a promise. So, so that's, but as maybe it's clear from it, it, explaining kind of my views about mathematics and physics that I'm actually, you know, Ultimately, you want to have theories that you can test and you want to be able to assure that you're right. But I'm actually someone who that's not the primary thing for me. The primary thing is actually, you know, the do you have a really compelling new idea and really something that gives new new insight and, and, you know, at kind of the deepest structural level of this theory. That's and, you know, and I agree fine with Brian or with others who say, well, you know, (laughs) you should pursue such things even if they're not testable. And I, I agree. And that's, that's fine. So my argument against string theory, my primary argument has, has never been that it's not testable. It, it, it's, it has always been that it, um, you know, it, it, it just doesn't explain anything and it, it doesn't actually, there is no kind of consistent set of equations you can write down that, that, you know, is compelling and that actually explains something. Uh, and so, you know, Yes, yeah, so, so so it's it's a bit of a, a of a red herring. I'm I'm actually on the same page as as a, lo- a lot of people and agree with them perfectly that yes, you could um you should we as theorists we should be pursuing things which aren't experimentally testable, you know, for for, for uh, you know by by other reasons and and I'm also a lot. I spend all my time in mathematics departments among mathematicians. Math, <laughs> I mean, nothing anyone does in a math department is experimentally testable. None of it. All day. So, so you know, I, I see every day that you know there's this. You can make huge progress. You can get these new ideas. You can really get somewhere. You know, and by pursuing things away, which has nothing whatsoever to do with going out and looking at the real at and testing it in the real world. So, so yeah. <laughs>